One of my favorite stories that I covered was back in 1987. It was just one of those, it wasn't a big story. It wasn't a, a major story by any means. And some guys would even said, you know, they, they didn't even file on the story, but it was so unique and it was just such a cool story. I, I have to tell you about it. Basically, uh, when Ronald Reagan was president, uh, he would fly out to the ranch a couple of times a year, usually Thanksgiving and around that time. And he would spend weeks out there, a few weeks. And, he, you know, they'd, he'd chop wood or clear brush and they would bring in brush at his ranch to clear up in the uh, Santa Ynez Mountains. And it, it, it was, you know, it was a good time as a reporter uh, because you, you got to sit with uh, and hang out with all the White House crew. And when I it was, I was with UPI, I was a national correspondent, and this is sort of the Western White House. And then we would staff it. Uh, my friend uh, and colleague Bob Fuss and I would staff it for two weeks at a time or however long Reagan was going to be there. He was usually there three weeks or a month. And we'd have a hotel room up there and we would stay at the Ellis Coryell, which was really an apartment turned into a uh, hotel. So we'd have uh, kitchen facilities and dishes and a uh, separate bedroom and, and my kids and could come up and, and we just had a great time. And the cool thing about the trip was they would, we'd have a morning briefing every morning. It would last, it would start about 10 o'clock and finish about 1030. And then they would say that's a lid, which basically meant we we're done for the day. Go do what you're going to do. Some guys would go sailing. Some guys would go hiking. Uh, some guys would just hang out at the beach or whatever in Santa Barbara. Uh, and they would page us if something major broke. And rarely did it ever happen that way. But the cool thing was the trip back when Reagan left for go back to Washington. They had planned to stop in the middle of the country in Kansas. And Alf Landon, the oldest man to ever, living man to ever run for president at the time, was having his 100th birthday. And so Reagan was going to fly back, land in Topeka. We would motorcade from Topeka to the Alf Landon home, which was his big Southern mansion with the pillars on a, on a, on a hill. This is really cool. It's like really out of the deep South almost. And even though it was not the deep South and uh, then he would share birthday cake, make a little speech and then fly back with the rest of the press corps uh, back to um, Washington. And so I was designated to go, I would cover the story. Then I would fly back on commercial uh, flights to Santa Barbara and then my trip would be done. So uh, it was really cool. We we got uh, we flew there and we left out of uh, Oxnard and uh, we flew to Topeka. And sure enough, we landed at this little dinky airport in Topeka, Kansas. And then um, <laughs> we motorcaded on these two lane road back country roads to Alf Landon's house. And uh, so they had a set up probably about uh, maybe 30 yards away, 25, 30 yards away, the whole press crew there. And they had bleachers up there for, for local dignitaries and stuff. And the coolest shot I think I've ever seen, like I said, this was not a major story. It was the coolest shot I ever seen. It was Alf Landon, the oldest man who living, who had run for president and lost, sitting next to Ronald Reagan, the oldest man who was president at the time, in rocking chairs, rocking back and forth, eating birthday cake. And I still have that image in my mind. It was just such a really neat image. But what happened after was, was even more interesting for me personally, because after that event, we uh, motorcaded back to um, the airport. We had a room there where the, the media was and our, our, the press corps and, and me. We did our, filed our stories. And I, of course, this was radio. And uh, we filed our stories. And then they all left to go back to Washington. Well, my commercial flight, I had to take a 20-seat um, a passenger flight, small plane, from Topeka to Kansas City. Then I flew Kansas City back to Los Angeles, took a commercial flight from 20-seater from Los Angeles to Santa Barbara, where my car was, spent the night there, and then drove home the next day. Well, uh, I waited, and I was the, at one point, the airport was closed. It was a Sunday. So there was nothing there. I mean, no food, no nothing. It was one rental car guy that was open. And I don't even know why he was open, but uh, probably because of the press corps in case somebody wanted to stay, but that never happened. So there, there I was all by myself in this airport. This is before the internet. So I didn't have a phone that had stuff on it. And so I waited, it seemed like I waited a couple hours and just waited. And then they, my plane pulled up and uh, a guy came in and said, uh, Mr. Brill, are you there? And I said, yes. And so 
um, I, I got in the plane and there was three of us <laughs> in the plane. I think it was yeah, a woman, another guy and me. And, um, you know, you're in a small flight when the seats go back, they fold forward back and forth like this. You really know you're in a small flight. Um, when the co-pilot comes back and says, Mr. Brill, can you sit on the other side of the airplane to, to balance it out? <laughs> you know, I, okay. And then we took off and sure enough, we took off into a rainstorm. And the only thing I can think of is my favorite musician of all time is Buddy Holly. And I'm thinking, oh, do, 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 this will be the day that I die. You know, and we, I, you couldn't see anything. It was a blinding rainstorm. We got, they got the plane up in the air. And um, I mean, it swerved down the runway going into the wind or whatever, and took the probably 25 minutes flight to Kansas City, got to Kansas City. I've never been to the Kansas City airport. It's a pretty good size airport and uh, not the greatest airport in the world at the time. And like I said, this is 1987. Uh, I believe it was probably uh, September or October of 1987, maybe a little, uh, little uh, would have been, uh, he, Alf Landon died in October of 87. So this would have been before that. And um, sure enough, uh, the, I, I waited at the uh, Kansas City Airport for another hour or so, got my flight, flew back to um, Los Angeles, then took another flight, just a small flight from there to Santa Barbara. Well, we, it was also a very rocky flight. You know, so here I am, two rocky flights in out of three, land in Santa Barbara and uh, go back to my hotel and go home the next day. It, it was an interesting trip. It was a really, really fun trip. But it was a little bit scary too uh, on those uh, those two uh, little flights. But uh, it was good, and it's an image that, again, I will never ever forget. And that was uh, Alf Landon and, and Reagan sitting next to each other on the porch, rocking back and forth in separate rocking chairs. There, eating birthday cake. Hope you enjoy this story, and I'll have another one for you too.